Christ who has afforded us another opportunity to come give thanks. So y'all Thanksgiving down? Oh, y'all still look hungry to me. I don't know. We all going to have response cards handed out because I know we sin being gluttonous on Thursday. We just need to have intercessory prayer for everyone in the room. It, you, you, you know you're bad if you got a whole plate of dessert, you know. <laughs> if you got a whole plate and you just got different kinds of dessert all on the same plate, you need a response card. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I, they, uh, I, they got hip to the trick we do at our house. I bought small plates. They got mad at me because I bought small plates. Uh, Amen, amen. But you know, when you buy them big chinette plates and they put all, you know, you just, you know, you know how it is. The more room you have, the more room you want to use. Amen. But we certainly uh, have a reason to be thankful regardless of what day of the week it is, but especially on Sunday morning. So it's good to be in the house one more time. Have y'all found Romans 12? Y'all know we left a lot of meat on the bone last week and uh, my prayer is that we can get off into verse number two here. Uh, it is a very interesting text, and I, I love this uh, particular passage, and uh, I want to, to, to kind of put a bow on it again. We are, uh, if you're visiting with us, we have been uh, in a study this quarter since October, and we'll finish the year off in uh, looking at what it means to, to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I'm going to probably finish the year up in John 4. Y'all know that's up on our board up there on the, on the, um, on the banner uh, where Jesus challenges the woman at the well. But before we get to that particular text, we have been approaching worship uh, not only from a formal standpoint, but also an informal standpoint. But I want us to watch this. Anytime praise of God comes off your lips, that is a form of worship. I want you to understand that. And we've been looking at with this text, your lifestyle itself also is a form of worship. It's not something that a child of God turn on and turn off. Because I want us to understand something. God has created all things, and those things in which he creates, uh, whatever he creates them to do, whatever he creates them to do, they give him glory when they do those things. Uh, when, 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 the, when the lion roars on the Serengeti, he is doing what God designed him to do. Therefore, God is getting the glory in that. We understand that? When the ocean and the waves crash up against the sand, I want you to understand that's what God designed it to do. And it is giving God glory by doing what God has designed it to do. Now, I want you to watch this. With humans, because he gives us free will, he don't make you do it. Now, I want you to watch this. A lion can't help but be a lion. The ocean can't help but be the ocean. But you and I make up our mind what we want to be. I wish I had somebody could say amen. Y'all realize if you don't want to be a man. <laughs> y'all act like y'all looking at me funny. I, I, I said God lets you choose, don't he? Don't he let you choose? He don't make you. Now, now, he, he give you the plumbing, don't he? He, he? he give you the testosterone. But if you don't want it, there's some doctors that'll help. I wish I had somebody could say amen, right? So I want you to understand now, I want you to understand, we, we have to do what God has created us to do. And when we are born again and to the family of God and we submit to the king of, 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 of kings and the Lord of lords, I want you to understand at that time, our job from here into the endless ages is to give it up for the Lord. Amen. And when we don't do that now, when we don't do that, it's because we choose not to. And we fall short of giving God his proper Papa Glory. All right, have you found Romans 12? I want to read it again for your hearing. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. I want you to look at the worship language here. Sacrifice is worship language. We present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, a set apart, and acceptable, or pleasing to God. Watch this. When you present your body as a living sacrifice, set apart, pleasing to God, it is your, we looked at this last week, your spiritual worship. Where's your spiritual worship, Tyson? When you present your body 
as a living sacrifice, set apart, pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Well, what happens when we come to church on Sunday? Isn't that what worship is and the rest of the week is our time? No, when you present your body. When do you present your body? Every day you have breath. Every day you got warm blood pumping through your veins. Every day you know the difference between up and down, in and out. You know your name and your social security number. That's when you ought to give your body as a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, acceptable, or pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service or your spiritual worship. What does that look like, though? Tyson, I'm struggling. What does that look like? Well, Paul would say it looks like this. And do not be conformed to this world. Now, we're going to focus on these two words right here, conform and transform. Do not be conformed to this world, but in contrast, be transformed. Now, 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 Paul would say that there is a difference between conformed and transformed. All right. He tells us stay away from being conformed. He then goes on in contrast and says, but be transformed. Now, the question is then how can you and I live transformed lives? Paul would say we do it by the renewing of your mind. Watch this. What does that mean? Transformation starts on the inside. Then it takes place on the outside. Transformation don't start on the outside and then work its way through your pores trying to fix on the inside. It starts off on the inside and then it blossoms Come on, somebody, on the outside. That, that's why it bugs me when folk try to dress up a person who ain't ready to be dressed up yet. Now, I ain't talking about putting on suit. I'm talking about going through the motions of the look. Many of us have gotten good at going through the motions of the look, and we look transformed on the outside, but on the inside, we still rotten. I wish I had somebody could say amen. When, when you truly renew your mind and repent slowly but surely, it begins to show on the outside. You can't teach a person to go through the motions and get it done on the outside, and on the inside, they still rotten. Transformation starts on your inside. Paul would say, you want to change? It's going to start with renewing your mind. Oh, we're going to get off into that this morning. All right, all right, all right. Well, why do we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind? Paul would say, so that, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, all right, all right. This morning, I want to speak to you from the subject. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Y'all see my butterflies up there? If we're honest with ourselves, we are all under construction. Amen. Like Crenshaw, like the 405 freeway, still under construction. No one is ever fully finished in life because submitting to God or to the will of God means that he controls our building, our growth, our plans, and our additions. There are rooms in our lives that need to be expanded. Amen, Tyson. I know there's some areas I still need to grow. There are foundations that need to be shored up. That's right. There's some things we think we believe, but they need some foundational principles set around them. There are areas that need to be refurnished. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all know when something needs a new coat of paint, a new carpet, don't start, don't, don't start, Tyson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. We are all changing. Am I right about it? One step at a time, bit by bit, from one place to another. Change comes when we make up in our minds that something is going to happen and that we give way for that change to take place. Everyone in this room is being challenged to change. 
We are determining in our minds those things that we will and will not do. Places we will and will not go. Things we will subject ourselves to or not. The problem that we have is whether the world or God controls our change. Somebody is pulling the strings to as, uh, as to how we change. For change to take place, one must accept it. For change to stick, one must embrace it. For change to take effect, one must live it. God wants us to look more like him and not like them. Amen. For God to take us from sinners to saints, the process must include repentance. For us to curse less and bless more, uh-oh, for us to take less and give more, uh-oh, for us to hate less and love more, you and I, everyone in this room, must be renewed. All right. At first glance, our text encouraged us to consider the mercies of God so that we might present our bodies as living sacrifices. Y'all remember this from last week? Since God has saved us, at least we could do is serve him. Because God has loved us, isn't it reasonable for us to live for him? Knowing that God has redeemed us, we can't help but rely on him. Since God has given us life, the least we can do is live those lives for him. Because God is merciful to us, it's reasonable for us to minister to others. Knowing that God gave his son for us, we can't help but give ourselves as sacrifices. In verse 1 of our text, the word present, King James uses the word yield, is aorist active infinitive. Can I sound extra intelligent for just a moment? Aorist active infinitive is a verb meaning that it's a once and for all action. Why do you say that, Brother Tyson? Because I want you to understand when you submit to God and you say that you're going to live and love the Lord, you, you, you do it one time making up your mind and it has a continuous action tied to it. Y'all looking at me funny. Those of you who married, y'all know what it was like on your wedding day? Uh-oh, I didn't get no amens. Uh-oh. We might be in trouble. We might be in trouble. You, 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 you know, brothers, I've stood up here a lot uh, marrying folks for the years, and, 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 the, and the groom is standing next to me, and, and I, I've said, said, stood next to some grooms, and a beautiful wife come in, and y'all know them old school with the veil, and, you know, she come in wearing all white. You can wear white, can't you? And she, she comes in, and, and she, looking, she looking so good, and makeup done perfectly, hair in every place, daddy chest stuck out. They come come walking down, and I'm looking at the groom, and I'm saying, ooh, boy, that, ooh, look at that, ooh, look at that, mm -hmm, yeah, boy, you look, ooh, look at that, and he's sitting there, he nervous, I said, look, man, I'm telling him jokes, because I'm trying to keep him calm, you know, and, 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 and she looking so good, and, 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 and you know what happens, we go through the ceremony, and when we get through the ceremony, they make vows, right? I, I, to, to love and to cherish, and uh, through sickness and in health, uh, richer of uh, a poor. Now, I want you to watch this. At this exact moment, when her makeup is all cool, hair in every place, daddy chest stuck out, he feeling good, wet and paid for, ain't nothing left but the shouting. It's easy to love. You vow to love on that day, but your vow don't kick in till she come to bed with a white mask on her face, hair wrapped, flannel pajama bottoms on that can't be penetrated. I wish I had some. He might look good standing up next to Brother Tyson till he leave his socks all over the house, won't put up the dishes that he dirtied up after eating after you cleaned up. Now love really got to kick in. Now see, on the day of, it's easy. Am I right about it? My uncle, 
my, 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 my Uncle Cedric, he goes to 11 o'clock service. He, he, told, uh, he told me, an older man told him in his wedding, he turned around and told me at my wedding. He said, son, when your wife walk down the aisle, she going to look good enough to eat. And in about five years, you're going to wish you had. <laughs> I didn't understand that on the day of. But it didn't take five years. So what you're vowing, what you're vowing is till death, come on somebody, you make your promise on that day. The rest of the days you live trying to keep your promise. When you yield your body, you're saying, Lord, here I am. But you do not know what waits on you on tomorrow. You really might have to give your body. You really might have to bite your tongue. You really might have to so get on your knees. You don't know what your vow will entail. But when you present yourself, you're saying, God, wherever we go, I'm going with you. So it's a once and for all type of deal. All right. Thus, when it comes to our offering, Paul would say your body is it. When it comes to how often we should offer it, the, it literally means perpetually. That's why the word living sacrifice is there. Because it happens over and over and over again. It is continuously. The word present is an infinitive meaning. It acts like both a verb and a noun. Now, if y'all just allow me to take you to English class just one more little time, I want you to understand because it acts like a verb and a noun, your living sacrifice or your reasonable service or your spiritual worship is something that both you are and something you do. A noun is a person, place, a thing. A verb describes an action. It, it acts like a verb and a noun, meaning it's something you do, verb, and it's something you are, noun. All right, preacher, why is that important? We all must understand that when we live our lives, we do so as living sacrifices. You don't take a day off from living. Do you? Wives, do you give your husband a day off from being married to you? I wish I had some. Th those of you in Pahrump, that was my wife who just said that. She talked real loud. Those of you looking in from Atlanta, North Carolina, from Alaska, that was Sister Mo that just screamed to the top of her lungs. They worshiping with us. I'm just trying to keep them included. You, you don't take no days off, do you? Then why is it that we have compartmentalized our lives to the fact that we give God two hours, and if Tyson on one, two and a half hours on Sunday, and that's it? So you don't turn it off when you leave. You don't turn it off. You don't take no days off. You live for God every breath you take. You don't get a chance to come in and one foot in and then go out and do something else. It, 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 either you are or you are not. Now, y'all know I say either you is or you ain't, but I'm trying to. Right. It, it's, it's one or the other now. Come on now. We, we, yeah. it, you, you, it's, it, it's who you are and what you do. What does all this mean? Well, the offering of your body as worship uh, is that it is something you do and something you are. So where does that leave us? Well, let's go back to the point of the message. Because of God's abundant mercy, our offering to him should be the totality of ourselves. So here's two things I want to leave you with this morning. We have to avoid confirmation, and we need to achieve transformation. If you're taking notes, here's the two points. I want to talk to you about avoiding confirmation, and I want to talk to you about achieving transformation. Whatever it is, we're going to have to be morphed. It is imperative for us to understand the premise that Paul gives us in verse 2, if we are to fully embrace and appreciate offering our bodies, mind, wills, and lifestyles to God as spiritual worship. Paul encourages Christians to not be conformed to the world. To conform 
to this world means to be shaped or fashioned into something on the outside. When the world rubs off on us, we begin to look like, act like, and sound like unbelievers. We make decisions like heathens. Our attitudes reflect worldly standards. We embrace judgments, approaches, outlooks, slants, techniques, and tactics, not from God and his word, but from man. Paul uses the word conform in the passive form. He said, Tyson, you're talking all this English uh, literature, uh, literature stuff. Listen, listen, when something is passive, it means that an action is being performed on it. Preacher, what you trying to say? Well, if, if I say that I hit Dwayne in the shoulder, Dwayne is passive. He's allowing me to perform the action on him. When we are conformed, we're allowing the world to take the lead and shape us. We can't be passive and let stuff happen. Somebody got to stand up for the Lord and fight. You, you, you can't let the world have its way on you. Now, I want you to watch this. When you are passive, it means you allow it to take place. You can fight off the world if you decide you're going to fight. The problem is most of us won't fight because we have fully accepted and embraced what the world has to say. We are to be the light of the world, meaning we look and behave and act and have different attitudes from the people in the streets. <sighs> All right. Because it's passive, it means that we allow it to happen. Paul says, stop letting the world dictate to you what it is you're supposed to do. We can't allow the world to have its way with us. We give permission to the world to mold us. We let the world have its way in our lives. We permit the streets to shape how we think and what we do. If you look in the mirror and you look more like the world than you do Christ, it's not God's fault. It's not the school's fault. It's not your neighborhood's fault. It's yours. Being passive, standing idly by, parenting lazy, leaving your marriage up to your partner, not letting God in, not being fed by his word, is you allowing the world to take hold of you. All right, let me see if I can explain this before we get to this passage right here. All right, when you are baptized into Christ, we believe and teach, the Bible teaches that we are born again. Am I right about it? Didn't Jesus tell Nicodemus that? Except you be born of the water and of the spirit. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God, right? We are, we are taught that we go down, dead, old, come up, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Am I right about it? So when you come up out of the water and you are placed into the kingdom of God and you become a member of the body of Christ and you are a member of the church of Christ, you are new, brand new molded, right? That's who you are, right? Child of God. Now that's who you are on your inside. No matter what you look like at the exact moment on your outside. Now, didn't some of us come from some, some crazy places? Can we just be honest? Can we have honesty time right here? Everybody didn't come in the first day they came to the Lord looking like the way they look now. Some of us came out of the bar. Still had liquor on our breath. Some of us came in here smelling like weed. I wish I had a church could say amen. See, some of us got out of the bed with our boyfriend or girlfriend and walked in here. Amen, Walsh. Quit act like y'all ain't forgotten. We've been some places and have done some things. We keep it a secret, but I know some of y'all sisters used to throw in the street. Yeah, that's right, switchblade. I know. You carry your stuff on you. That's where we came from. Am I right about it? That's where we came from, right? But when we gave our life to Christ, God made us new on the inside. Now, your outside still might have to change. But on the inside, you've been renewed. Now, everybody started, when you give your life to Christ, as a new creature in Christ. Now, let me show you what happens. When you conform to the world, you are allowing the world to put you in a mold that is not designed for you. As a child of God, God got something bigger and better for you. 
God has some things lined up for you and I that will take us past where we are, over where we think we need to be. God, God got some big plans for his children. Our problem is we would much rather let the world shape us and put us into something that don't fit us Amen. than saying I'd rather be free from that and walk with the Lord. All right, y'all looking at me funny. All right, so, so you know what happens during Thanksgiving time. You know, you know, people are always in abundance. We overdo everything, right? You know, I told you about the plate, five, six desserts and all that. Well, one of the things around the holiday times that I do, I don't, I, I, I'm not, I don't like uh, hoarding stuff. Me and my wife, we struggle with this because she don't throw nothing away and I throw it away. So we struggle. So we go back and forth. But one of the things we decided to do several years ago was we, if we buy a new pair of shoes, an old pair got to go. Come on now, y'all. Need... <laughs> if I buy a suit, I need to give one away. All right. So have you ever cleaned out your closet? But before you give it away, you put it on to see whether or not it still fit? Come on now, you ain't going to give it away if you know you still get into it. I tell folk all the time, I come in, people are like, ooh, that's a new suit. I'm not, no, I just shopped in the back of my closet. That's because I start trying to sell to Now, I want you to watch this. I had one suit, love this suit, but, you know, my Tyson ate itself out of the suit. And uh, <laughs> so I go to put on the suit. So I get the pants on, and you know when you try on pants, it's too tight, how it makes a... They got something out now, that they, they refer to it, Sister Glaze, as a muffin top. You know what that is? That's when you put on something that's too tight and it bulges your belly and it look like the top of a muffin. I wish I, see, y'all not being honest with me. I'm using myself as the example. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. So, so I put up, and so, you know, when you tie your pants, you put your pants on and then it force your gut one way or the other either up over the belt <laughs> so you get the pants on and I realize all right Lord I can take this to the tailor he can let me out some I can get back in this thing you know <laughs> then you put the jacket on and you fat guy in a little coat right so the button hanging on now listen if you stand up and you look like this I'm not talking about you this was a I'm talking about comfort confirmation if, if your button hanging on like this That means that that is not for you. That's what that means. If it's too short, too long, it don't fit. Okay. Conformity is when you take something that don't fit and walk out the house with it on anyway. Now, have you ever wore something that was too tight, didn't sit right? You uncomfortable all day long. Am I right about it? You sitting up, you can't bend over and get it because if you do, the whole back might open up. You, you, you can't, you, you bending down like this. You know you can't bend over, you split them pants. You don't button the jacket because you know the button hanging on, so you don't, you, you, you had a jacket open. You are taking something, your body, which don't fit your clothes, and you forcing it to make it work. Amen. When children of God who have been born of the Spirit, born anew, put on things that the world says where it ain't designed for you, it ain't cut for your type, it's too big, it's too small, quit trying to wear the world stuff. Amen. Well, preacher, what does that mean? God is a God of compassion. His people are saved because of his compassion. You and I are sitting here right now because of compassion. How can you turn around and harden your heart to those who need you most? That's the way the world thinks, and it don't fit children of God. Amen. Amen. You, the world says, tell them you love them to get what you want. 
and then treat them any old kind of way. Jesus said, I'm going to show you I love you by giving my very life. We buy into the world when we use our words to manipulate people. That's not of God. And it don't fit. That's conformity. You are forcing something into a shape it was never designed to be. And you know what that does to us? We know it because our conscience tells us we know we're doing wrong. That's the reason why you feel bad when you do it. Because the moment you do it, you know that ain't what you're supposed to do. Come on, somebody. The, 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 the moment you cuss them out, you knew you knew you was wrong. Come on, man. I need somebody going to be honest. The, the, the moment your attitude was get on then, you knew you was wrong the moment you said it. And they walk away and now you beating yourself up because you know that don't fit and you shouldn't have had it on in the first place. You know that. That's your conscience telling you that don't fit. That ain't for you. You know that was wrong. But we have conformed. When, when we take something that's not designed to do that and we force it into that mode. And let me tell you something. The world, you ever heard the expression misery love company? See, the world don't want to let you be by yourself. They want you to come on over with them. I remember the first time I went to school. I went away to school. I was at uh, Chapman University, and I was, uh, I was on campus. And, and, you know, I had just, I pre- just preached my first sermon. I mean, I had just, just preached my first sermon. And, I, you know, I'm trying to live right, Brother Davis. And so, you know, I'm not going to the football party, and I'm not going to the after party. And, I, you know, so you try to tell folk no, but they won't let you tell them no. Now, come on. Come with us. You're going to have fun. Come on. You ain't got to do nothing, but just come on. Y'all heard this before. Now, y'all ain't said that before, have you? I'm doing wrong, but I don't want to do wrong by myself. So I want you to join me in doing wrong. But for children of God, that don't fit. See how it made me, y'all, okay, let's look at, let's look, which one do I want to look at? Do I want to look at this one or do I want to look at the next one? Let's, let's look at, let's look at this one. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 17. Paul says, this I say therefore, and testify the Lord. Now he's talking to Christians, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Somebody got to stand up and say, not for me. I don't wear that. Somebody got to say, I'm not going to conform. I'm not going to go along to get along. But we got to be willing to walk with us and God alone. If you ain't comfortable walking with just you and the Lord, you're going to always follow the crowd. This is what messes with our worship. We spend six days a week following the crowd. And then we dust it off, shine it up, put Stacey Adams on it, come in on Sunday and think we're doing something. See, when you live for the Lord Monday through Saturday, then your worship on Sunday take off. When you're struggling all week, you come here, then it's hard to get in gear. And we struggle getting in gear, don't we? Paul says you got to be willing to walk by yourself. If you walk the way the rest of the Gentiles walk, this is where they walk, this is how they walk, in the futility of their, their mind, meaning in their own thinking. Watch this. Their understanding is what? Dark. Watch this. They're alienated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them, because of their blindness. Look at all these words. Futility means it amounts to nothing. Their understanding is darkened, meaning they don't understand anything. They're apart from God. Ignorance is in them. Y'all see this? They're blind. Y'all see this? Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. You know what that means? Them folk do whatever they want to do, however they want to do it, whenever they want to do it. But I want you to watch this. Children of God don't behave that way. But when we allow ourselves to be conformed, we'll buy into that. And it messes with our ability to live for God. See, when we conform, we can't transform. Let, let, me, let me hasten on. Being conformed, in essence, means masquerading as something you are not. As Christians, deep down, we know the difference between what God wants of us and our own actions. When we do things that are contrary to the will of God, we are, n- we are new creations. That should be new, not now. New creations masquerading as something else. 
we have been changed. And somewhere down the line, it just got easier to do it man's way rather than God's way. And that's why we struggle with so much when we come to worship, knowing that we have sinned. Our lifestyles affect our worship. But I want to leave you with transformation. When we offer ourselves as living sacrifices, we do so not being conformed to the world, but by being transformed. The word transform in Greek means metamorphosis in English. Y'all know the word metamorphosis? <clears throat> Just like conformity, when Paul uses conformity, transformation is also passive, meaning it's something that happens to you. Now, I want you to think about it. We're talking about I know I've been changed. Either the world has its way with you or you allow God to have his way with you. But I want you to watch this. Either one, you still control it. How do I control it, Tyson? Because either you allow the world to rub off and mold you into his shape or you allow God to have his way. Many people want to grow, but they won't let God grow them. Don't we ask for blessings? Lord, give me the strength. Okay, y'all do know how you get more strength, right? You got to lift weight. Are y'all missing this? How do you get strength, Tyson? You got to lift more weight. So you know what that means? God got to put some stuff on you. Now, we want strength without lifting the weight. God trying to bless you, you won't take the blessing. Lord, give me the endurance. Endurance means you got to run more. I'm about to make y'all afraid to pray, ain't I? You ain't going to ask for patience. You ain't going to ask for endurance. You ain't going to ask for nothing. You be scared to ask for stuff. We'll be scared, right? I, I, God want to give. You, you got to allow God to do it. There's, there's circumstances that get put on our plate. We'll run from it because we don't want to be bothered. We don't want to deal with it. When God is saying, this is how we're going to get to your answer prayer. So it's passive, meaning metamorphosis is something you allow God to perform on you. This means that metamorphosis happens when we allow God to have his way in our lives. Transformation or metamorphosis happens by the renewing of our minds. It is change that comes from within. You cannot morph into a Christian by simply putting a suit and tie on, a lowering the hemline to your skirt. That's change on the outside. Metamorphosis is change on the outside that comes from the inside. True transformation comes when we yield to God starting with our thoughts and desires and attitudes which over time begin to display themselves in our smiles. Amen. In our helping hands. Amen. In what we wear. Amen. And how we are affected by adversity. Amen. And in our attitude towards others. Thus, pinning wings on a worm doesn't make it a butterfly. It becomes a butterfly by going through the metamorphosis in a cocoon. I'm going to extend an invitation like this. <clears throat> God wants us to be changed, to give ourselves consistently to him. But to do that, little Tavon, he got to do that by working on your inside. Repentance comes when you change your mind. Now tonight, I'm going to try to show you, if you come back and get this tonight, that your body your mind, and your will all work together. And we got to give God all of it if we're going to live pleasing to him. Now, when a butterfly is ready to be a butterfly, we got to appreciate the fact that it don't start as a butterfly. Y'all know it starts as a caterpillar? Google it. A caterpillar is ugly. Y'all ever seen one? A caterpillar is ugly. If you look at it, you say, Lord, what? But I want you to think about this. God created it that way. But do you realize it don't stay that way? That's good news for the caterpillar. He don't have to stay ugly. 
say, well, preacher, what this got to do with me? Well, when you look in the mirror and you see stuff you don't like. Have you, have you ever looked in the mirror? And I ain't talking about just the stuff on your face. I'm talking about into your depths of your soul. Look into your eyeballs. And you see some stuff. And you know you've done some stuff and been some place you had no business going, amen. And you're ashamed of yourself. You might look ugly, but you don't have to stay that way. So God wants to change you. God wants to change you. I'll show you how he does it. For the caterpillar, when it's time for the caterpillar to become a butterfly, he goes off by himself because God has to give him the place where the change going to take place. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This is going to preach, Brother David. I want you to watch this. There is a place you got to go for the change. To t- There's a place. You got to go for the change to take place. There's an old song that says, take me to the water. You can't go with mama, daddy, big mama, son. You got to go by yourself, you and the Lord. Biologists teach us that the cocoon engulfs the caterpillar that he is completely surrounded by the cocoon. I wish I had somebody. The word baptism means to immerse. Every part of your body got to go underneath the water. You got to be fully engulfed in the water. Something happens for the caterpillar on the inside of the cocoon it starts to change it ain't gonna come up out of the cocoon the same way he went into the Paul says we are new creatures in Christ Jesus and when we come up we have put on Christ biologists teach us that when the caterpillar breaks out of the cocoon he don't look the same Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, 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 he no longer crawls on the ground because God has now given him two. But I want you to watch this. The the moment that the caterpillar hatches, do you know his wings are still wet and he can't fly? So you know what, what has to happen? God got to dry the wings which means he going to be grounded for a while, but not for long. And just as soon as his wings dry, he going to take off in flight doing stuff he ain't used to doing. He used to crawl on his face. Now he flaps his wings. He used to look ugly, but now he got a pattern on his wings and flies around. And Muhammad Ali said, you, give, you start to float. I wish I had somebody. You, you start to float wherever where you go. You, you don't crawl on your belly. You, you begin your day, you, and that's what the butterfly does. He floats around, and, and, and you become new. Same caterpillar, new person all over. When you give your life to God, he transforms you, protect you. He will ground you, but one day we all going to fly away. I said, well, preacher, I gave my life to the Lord, but I've been stuck. I've been stuck in this same place. Well, the question is, are you ready to fly? Because if you're ready to fly, God got something for you. But you got to let him have his will and his way and his own timing in your life. That means we're going to have to keep on repenting. See, repentance is not a one-time thing. It's a daily thing. Every day, we got to fight off. Think about it. Every day, you got to wake up and say, I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my children. I ain't going nowhere. Now, some of y'all say, I've never had to say that. Keep on living. 
Now what the older folks say? Keep on living. It's going to come a day, amen, amen, when you're going to be challenged. But you got to think back to that vow you made. Same thing with your baptism. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. When you get ready to do for self, you got to remember that vow you made. So I'm going to give myself and present myself to the Lord. No matter how thick it gets and no matter how, how hard it may be, I'm going to continue to love him. That means when them days when you're ready to give a person a piece of your mind, you hold on to it. Them days you want to go off and come from back here, you, you put your hand in your pocket. You leave, you go outside and drown the grass, you do something. But don't let the world put you into its mode. If you're struggling right now because Monday through Saturday you look more like the street than you do like the Savior, ain't no time like the present to get it right. Recommit yourself right now. Don't wait till the first of the year. Recommit yourself right now. If you're not a child of God, you need to be saved. And only God can do it. You know that. Church don't save nobody. We're just a collection of folks that have been saved. But Jesus saves. His blood washes us clean. We don't have blood to give you other than the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Will you come to him by faith? That's hearing and believing in the word of God. Scriptures teach us to repent of our sins. That's changing. That's renewing your mind. Confess with your mouth that he's the Christ. Go down in the water of baptism. Come up a new creature. Become that butterfly. Because one day, the scriptures teach us Jesus is going to come back. On a cloud, the way he left. And he's going to come to get his people. The Bible says, Paul says, we're going to get caught up in the air with him to live with him forever. If you want to fly away like the butterfly, you got to be in Christ. If you're here and you need prayer for something that's bigger than you, it's not bigger than God. Will you come to the Lord right now? Together we stand. I really love the Lord. Sing, I really love the For me, Lord, he gave me the and that's why I love him, I love him, I really love the Lord, I'm going to praise his name, I Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Somebody need to come give it up to the Lord. Do you need prayer to take it I love Lord, I love him. Can we say he's been a friend to me?
your friend oh, wouldn't answer the phone oh, when your sister was away. Oh, he's been a friend, been a friend to, to me. me. Oh, he's done for me. Love.